Hello and welcome everybody. I am uh, very glad to introduce Silvia Barbero from Politecnico di Torino, who deals uh, with uh, uh, territories in relation to circular economy, com communities and uh, politics. Uh, this is a Synergetic Landscapes Unit uh, guest lecture and uh, we hope that everybody integrates uh, the exciting talk in their work and design within, uh, within the next stage of our unit. So please welcome Sylvia and the stage is yours. Thank you so much and thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to have this uh, uh, lecture uh, with um, uh, a small number of participants, so maybe we can interact uh, uh, a little bit uh, more. Uh, so I have, of course, uh, a presentation with me just to have a, a, a track uh, of the content, but uh, please uh, uh, don't be shy. And uh, if you have any questions or uh, something that you want to um, uh, underline or going deep in some topics, uh, just uh, switch off your microphone, uh, sorry, switch on your <laughs> microphone uh, and camera, of course, uh, and uh, interrupt me uh, with your question. Um, uh, I had in this um, visualization, I have, uh, uh, I can see the chat, uh, but uh, I should click on it. Uh, so maybe I will be a little bit uh, not so reactive. So write on chat uh, with the awareness that maybe I'm not uh, so, uh, I cannot see it uh, uh, immediately or otherwise switch on your, microf uh, your microphone and just ask me directly uh, your question. Uh, so uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and uh, uh, again, thank you, Mary, uh, for um, for the invitation. Um, I, I'm an associate professor here in Politecnico di Torino, uh, teaching systemic design uh, um, at the master degree uh, in uh, in systemic design, uh, and also uh, to our PhD students. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the course for the PhD students, of course, is uh, a, an advanced uh, uh, systemic design for territorial enhancement. Um, so uh, the um, uh, systemic design and uh, want to, to face uh, uh, some uh, the, the wicked problems that we are facing nowadays uh, that are very uh, complex and problem, uh, including uh, climate change, migration, market instability, uh, and also high uh, rates of poverty. Uh, all these uh, wicked problems are all interconnected uh, one with the other. And so how we can tackle this uh, kind of problem and address the change. So what we can do is not using a, a linear and reactive approach uh, with uh, we, where we have a cause and effect uh, um, uh, approach, but it is uh, uh, really a complex uh, uh, situation in which we should have, uh, we should apply a sort of adaptive uh, approach to this uh, um, context. So it is important to have this uh, strategic agility uh, and adaptive capability uh, to react quickly as soon as possible to uh, those problems and define our uh, future or better multiple future. Uh, so what is the role also of uh, uh, the designer in that sense? Uh, so we want to um, define a path uh, to have uh, effective uh, decision-making that can be a strategic for a future orientation. And also in looking at the um, 
global sustainable goals that uh, uh, the UN define and everyone is trying to uh, to follow and reach in somehow. So we should have this uh, uh, strategic foresight, uh, but to, to be really strategic, uh, we should be uh, flexible and open-minded. Uh, so because uh, we have a very diverse uh, uh, scenario that can, um, um, that can, uh, happen and we should choose the best uh, we can with uh, these uh, continuous changing uh, uh, of variables that we have in this uh, complex system. Uh, so uh, who are uh, the people that can uh, redesign our future in um, in that sense uh, of course thinking may uh, mainly uh, about the uh, public policy that we can also uh, address uh, uh, for a more sustainable development so uh, for sure the quadruple helix is fundamental in this process so not only the uh, researcher, uh, the university can have a crucial role in that part, but also uh, we need the support of the government uh, that should act, uh, uh, let me say, in um, a very uh, new way or innovative way. Uh, and in comparison with the past, uh, let me say also with a disruptive approach. Um, don't thinking anymore that the top-down uh, approach can work uh, in that sense. Also because uh, with the time frame that those kind of problem has, uh, you perfectly understand that are not in line with the different government that we have. I mean, the government lasts for some years, but the problems that we are going to address are really long lasting. Uh, and so uh, we cannot expect that one direction can be totally solved with one direction, but should uh, be taken uh, into account and uh, uh, approved also for all the government that can happen in different years. Uh, in, in that uh, framework, of course, also the citizen are fundamental. Um, because again, the uh, policy making nowadays uh, cannot be only a uh, top-down approach, but it is fundamental to have um, a bottom-up approach or a mix of it. The best is a mix of it. Uh, so with uh, the participation and uh, let me say a co-design of these policies with the citizen itself, the citizens and also the economic part of our um, country or region that is the 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 role of the companies uh, and the industry sector so both these uh, um, parts so let me say the economical part with the industry and the uh, so um, social part with a citizen should uh, um, have a crucial role in this uh, uh, process in order to have really a um, a, a good uh, and effective uh, uh, policy making for uh, our possible future. Uh, not only our um, th those uh, actors are crucial in, the, in that process, but also uh, the approach that they use to cooperate uh, win one with the other. Uh, so they should have um, open-minded, they should trust one uh, to the other, have their own responsibility. Doesn't, um, I think that the excuse of uh, uh, it's uh, not my responsibility, um, it is an excuse that cannot work anymore. Everyone has uh, its own responsibility and we should 
take our decision for the responsibility that we have and cooperate in order that all the actor can have um, um, uh, can reach and fulfill their um, their duty. Let me say. And in that sense, it is um, uh, important, uh, the cooperation among all these uh, actors in the quadruple alex. Uh, so the systemic design uh, is uh, a methodology that use uh, um, two different, uh, um, that mix two different uh, approach. Uh, for sure, the, uh, the systemic design Mm, should manage the complexity, as I mentioned at the beginning. So to do this, uh, the systemic design use the uh, complexity theories uh, that we know in order to manage this complexity. In, at the same time, um, it is important to have uh, an approach that not only manage the complexity, but also be able to plan uh, for the future. So all the tools like uh, related to the design uh, field and the design tools are crucial in order to have these um, uh, two aspects. So the, the management and the planning for the future. So uh, the, the mix and the merge of these uh, theories, uh, we have uh, the systemic design that is based on five main pillars. Uh, there are not in order of uh, uh, importance, um, but the main concept is that um, Nowadays, uh, we cannot uh, uh, think uh, uh, about our planet uh, as uh, a, uh, a infinite uh, um, world that we can continue to exploit, but uh, we should take care of it in order to um, uh, continue uh, the, uh, the, the prosperity of human beings and also the planets. The only way to do it is to imitate the nature. So the, the human action, the anthropic um, action that we can do, that we do as humans, uh, should imitate the nature. And the first, um, the first uh, principle of the nature is that, um, the, the waste doesn't exist. Uh, ex, uh, in nature, we have, of course, output of a certain natural rain that can be, uh, that are not waste uh, itself, but uh, it is usually an input for another natural rain. So at the same way, the anthropic action should work uh, um, uh, equally. So uh, we cannot have um, uh, output with our industrial production, but we should uh, think about those output as input for other production. We cannot release uh, in the environment uh, um, waste anymore, um, not only for the uh, environment and for the planet, but also for the benefit of the company. If uh, the company um, doesn't pay any more for uh, the waste that they are producing, but they get money because they can sell that material to another one, it is, of course, done for profit. Uh, and uh, so it is good for the planet and good for the uh, company, of course. That kind of um, see the uh, output as input uh, generate a multiple relationship among, uh, among the, the different actors in, in one territory. Uh, so 
the net that we generate with that approach is a net of a company that exchange material, energy, and information uh, in order to reach this uh, zero waste, let me say. Um, in, in that way, the system that you generate uh, with that, uh, it is orthopoietic. Uh, it means that uh, um, it will be um, uh, alive, it will continue to be alive in the time, even if the uh, context and the var variable in, uh, in, in the context can change. Because uh, in the same way, if the context change and also the, the business and the relation can change itself, themselves. Uh, so uh, in, in that way, the system, it is not fixed forever, and it will be the, the same, even if the context change and the situation of the context change. So uh, it will be able to change and adapt itself to the different uh, uh, situation that um, happen. Uh, of course, uh, that kind of project uh, and planning work for a specific, a specific Oops. Um, our um, work for that uh, we cannot export the same uh, the same uh, um, project in other contexts um, because the the uh, solutions that we can uh, even if maybe the problems are very similar but the solution can be very different. Uh, so we should choose the best solution for that territory. Uh, so of course the approach will be the same worldwide, but the solution are uh, specific for that uh, territory. Um, last but not least, uh, it is the role of the human being that should be uh, at the center of the, um, the project, in, not in a sense of um, e egocentric uh, uh, approach, but uh, in the sense that we, can, we should take into account also uh, the hidden actors in that kind of process. So don't look just to the... Um, single or direct actors involved, but also the indirect actors and uh, look at them and provide solutions also for, for them. Um, for that reason, it, it is very important to uh, have um, um, the involvement of the stakeholders and all the of the quadruple helix that I mentioned before, it is crucial to, to have. So we are again in a complex context, complex content context where we can not only connect the dot, but with the implementation of uh, um, the systemic design, we can design our future and uh, provide the meaning also at this uh, uh, complexity. So the systemic design uh, provide proper methodologies uh, that address the complexity, especially in decision-making for the future and have uh, a foresight project. Uh, so the systemic interconnection uh, that we generate in our ideal scenario uh, should have um, a share methodologies, uh, a share methodology with all the actors involved and also stakeholder, of course, and the common deliverables. So um, understanding each context because we should act locally. So it is crucial to have uh, this um, um, clear idea of the context, uh, collecting all the information. Uh, provide a um, um, common uh, big picture of the state of the art. 
that can be shared also with all the actors and all the stakeholders. At that point, it is possible to uh, explore the multiple future and choose the preferred ones. In that way, with that choosing, with that um, selection of uh, uh, the future that we would like to implement, uh, help us to define a strategic action plan. Then you have the uh, implementation itself that define um, a, a clear roadmap to follow in the years. Uh, because again, we will take time to implement that kind of project that has a very high level of complexity. So design is a hybrid blend of anthropology, systemic thinking, data science. Uh, so what we have uh, in, in mind is the society. Again, the, the man at the center of the project uh, is, um, uh, consider as a human being and uh, society as a whole. Uh, so we, we should uh, design uh, in, uh, for a better future for all. Uh, so I, I want to uh, share with you some experiences that we have uh, done here in Turin. Uh, divided in uh, our teaching experiences and uh, re research uh, uh, action that uh, uh, we had. Um, taking into account that uh, um, are not so, um, uh, we try always to mix uh, these two blocks. Uh, so often what we are doing in, in the research are shared with uh, the teaching uh, aspect uh, and, and vice versa. Uh, so just to organize the presentation was easier to uh, present you the, the teaching uh, uh, aspect that we do here in Polytechnic di Torino and then the research, but really uh, we try always to mix these two aspects because um, I think that the students can enrich the research and the research can provide an, a clearer idea to the students what can be their future uh, uh, employment, their future work, and uh, uh, really be um, projected in the future. Uh, so uh, the, the main course, as I mentioned before, is uh, the Systemic Design Lab uh, at the master um, degree uh, here in Politecnico di Torino. Um, and I'm um, uh, coordinating this uh, lab where are converging four different courses that put together uh, the different disciplines, uh, because uh, to work in that uh, complexity, uh, the designer can, cannot do everything. We need uh, the uh, economic experts, the engineers, uh, the, the humanities, and all those disciplines are fundamental. And what the design can do is facilitate a dialogue among all those components competencies in order really to improve uh, effective uh, foresight projects. So uh, I'm the coordinator of the systemic design course that is uh, the, the gray one and, and in the central uh, position in that schema. And then uh, there is a course of economic management of the project because as I said before, it is crucial to have also that the, the project that you are doing uh, should um, works also at economical level. Otherwise, they still remain in the paper and it doesn't allow to change really the world. So uh, we should study also the uh, economical feasibility of it. Then we have a course uh, in uh, uh, procedure uh, for environmental sustainability. So an engineer, uh, a teacher that is an engineer can uh, guide the students with all the tools related to the uh, environmental aspect and also let me say the technical feasibility of their project and then uh, a, a teacher related to the humanities 
teaching them the theory and the history of open systems, uh, because it is important to know the history to forecast the future and not doing the same uh, mistake maybe done in, in the past uh, and the learn from, um, from them, of course. Uh, we have, uh, a, uh, let me say, a little bit diverse uh, um, uh, approach in the, in the master uh, course uh, because the teacher are not in the, in, in, in under the desk, uh, but uh, we try to be uh, just the expert at the service uh, of the students. Uh, so uh, we try to be bossless. Of course, at the end, we should uh, uh, rate <laughs> the, the work, uh, but uh, also in, uh, in the final part, uh, we try to, uh, to, to ask the students to uh, evaluate themselves and their work or in a sort of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, evaluation among the different students. So really we try to be uh, bossless as much as possible uh, in order to really work together. We, uh, as a teacher, we have, of course, uh, a, uh, more experience uh, and we uh, want to um, uh, transmit uh, something, some methodology, some 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 tools that they should use in the future. But the approach is to uh, learn by doing, with uh, uh, a working with real case studies from the territories. So usually we cooperate uh, with different companies uh, of the territory, and the students are always working in team. Uh, so in that way, we try to guarantee uh, a potential success of the project that um, at the end of the semester are uh, done, done by the students. So the main aspect uh, and the, the things that they are uh, implementing is uh, uh, to uh, work, to, to do a industrial evolution. So uh, starting from a linear way uh, to, to approach the industry where uh, the company is just uh, extract, transform and release uh, and waste the, the material, uh, we try using the five principle to have a net among the different companies using the output as input for other companies. So that is the main goal and the approaches that, and the goal that they should reach uh, with their um, final project. Uh, working with the real companies that follow them for all the, the semester. At the end, we uh, usually would like uh, and we stress a little bit uh, the fact that they uh, are doing uh, and thinking about uh, a very complex uh, situation that can have multiple effects, uh, not, not only on a single company, but with multiple company and also on the territory. So we want to, that they try to express this complexity, um, not only in an academic way and with a high level of uh, precision and uh, a grade of feasibility, but also try to communicate it in a very easy way uh, so uh, at the end, we force them to present their complex project also with uh, a short video of two minutes maximum uh, in order to explain the complexity in a very easy way. I want to show you uh, that, uh, um, that video that is uh, uh, um, one uh, uh, of... Um, of the results uh, uh, done by the students uh, uh, two, two, three years ago. Uh, so I wish. One of the best things in the world is indeed wine. That's why we proudly present you, Let's Make Wine. After having thrown away all the pruning waste, 
we need to spray a lot of pesticides on vineyards, which then remains on the grape skin. Then the grape must be pressed, without remorse. The residues of the pressing, pumice, is sent to a local distillery, while the must is fermented inside an autoclave, to obtain wine. The wine is then fermented a second time, to obtain sparkling wine. But, we can do better than that, we could use energy from renewable sources, and use green manure to eliminate all sort of toxic pesticides. After planting and growing the green manure, it together with the pruning waste will first be shredded and then mixed with the soil, providing it with a natural pesticide. Then, knowing that pumice is rich of polyphenols, we could send them to local companies able to extract them, to make all kinds of different products, from cosmetics to medicals. Ozone can be used to save tons of water on machine cleaning. In addition to that, a tank washer could save up to 70% of the water used for autoclave cleaning. And now let's see the changes on the system. Less pollutions. Less water waste. Less use of toxic pesticides. New local relationships. And most importantly, more drunk people. I would like to thank my parents that always believed in me. Look at me, I am finally a professional. Anyway thanks for watching this video. Coming next. Clouds, do we really need them? Okay. So, um, th that is uh, one of the... Uh, the, the proposal done by our students, but if you go in the channel, uh, there we have a channel on uh, on um, YouTube that is called Systemic Design Lab uh, in uh, Politecnico di Torino. Uh, you can uh, see other um, other example of uh, this. Then we uh, start running also some uh, MOOCs on systemic design. One is uh, related to the digital digitalization of circular economy for innovative uh, SMEs. Uh, so we involve uh, many um, companies uh, in uh, at European level because it is also a result of uh, a um, European project. Uh, so uh, we involve also the uh, partners of this uh, project in, uh, in Europe to uh, implement this uh, MOOC. And uh, uh, we work mainly on three uh, strategic uh, domains in circular economy. That is uh, the bioeconomy, the circular cities, and the blue economy. Uh, so we would like to work mainly in that case with um, uh, professionals, with uh, uh, SMEs, in order to uh, improve the transfer uh, of knowledge from uh, the research um, to uh, the company. And uh, um, assure a continuous and long-term knowledge uh, sharing. And we choose the OpenEdX platform um, run in our uh, official website of Polito uh, in order to uh, be very open and have this accessible to everyone. Nowadays, we are running the um, first uh, um, the first run on the three domains. Uh, so, uh, and it is on circular cities. We start it uh, at the beginning of uh, April and the course is uh, uh, divided in two phases. In two phases, uh, so one uh, lasts from April to May and the second uh, from June to July, uh, also to uh, guarantee to the companies that participate in, the, in that MOOC also a, a accelerator uh, process. Um, we have nine international experts and uh, uh, 60 short lessons uh, provided in the, in, in the MOOC platform. 
Then we have also another uh, MOOC that is um, in planning, not already uh, running. It will be uh, ready for uh, the 2022. And it will be um, done with uh, the uh, AHO uh, uh, University in uh, Oslo. And it is uh, about the designing resilient regenerative system. Uh, so uh, we want to provide uh, a um, uh, learning experience and some tools and techniques to, uh, in order to face uh, this uh, complexity and propose and co-design uh, some solutions. Uh, so it, it will be um, a very um, um, a, a program that want to have to, to generate uh, uh, resilient uh, uh, systems, uh, stimulate uh, the, um, the, the connection of different disciplines. Uh, in order to have uh, to understand the different languages that comes uh, uh, to all of uh, the, the, the participants uh, and uh, uh, try to try to uh, motivate uh, um, local solutions uh, also to global problems. As I mentioned before, we should act locally, even if those problems are global, of course. Um, so about the research that we are running right now with my uh, group of research are, first of all, uh, this um, uh, retrace project that just uh, uh, was concluded uh, in 2020, but now we are running a second uh, phase of it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and um, uh, Retrace uh, is uh, a systemic approach for regional transition towards a circular economy. It was funded by uh, the Interreg Europe um, uh, project and it aims uh, at promoting the systemic design as a, met a method uh, to uh, redesign regional policies uh, uh, that, that want to move towards a circular economy. So we provide uh, uh, some methodological tools for regions, for all the regions involved in that project, that are five. Uh, exchange of experiences all around Europe, mainly uh, with, the, the, uh, with the regions involved in the project, but also including some other regions that are especially strong in circular economy and implement and mo monitor also five regional action plan that should be innovative and disruptive. disruptive. Uh, we, uh, as Politecnico di Torino, are the coordinator of uh, this uh, project that involves five regions in Europe. So uh, uh, Piedmont region in Italy, with our managing authority, that is uh, uh, Regione Piemonte, then the northeast uh, region of uh, uh, Romania with the ADR, that is the managing authority um, that have the rule of uh, um, define the policies for uh, that region. Then the, we have the uh, ministry uh, of um, the development and the European cohesion policy in Slovenia. Uh, so all the, the country in that case, uh, because the dimension, as you can also see geograph geographically, has um, uh, the this, uh, equivalent uh, uh, dimension of the other region involved. Then we have the Basque country. Uh, in Spain with uh, Azzaro Fondazioa and Vizcaya, and then the Nouvelle Aquitaine in France with uh, Estia and Apesa. So with them, we uh, have done the holistic diagnosis of each regions, underlining the potentialities 
potential the challenges and the potentialities of each regions and then we define the complex systems uh, in order to uh, go through uh, um, analysis of the possible future and results and then go uh, to uh, the implementation of a specific uh, uh, regional action plan and with uh, the monitoring phase uh, have uh, feedback on what we have done. It um, lasted for four years, where the first two years are related to the first phase of the field experiences with the exchange of experiences between all the regions involved, plus uh, Scotland and the Netherlands, because they are very um, advanced in uh, circular economy. We did this, the holistic diagnosis of the five um, uh, regions, we uh, had one semester to define the regional action plan and then for the last two years uh, in the phase two we have the privilege let me say to monitor if the regional action plan uh, was totally done uh, what was the difficulties uh, or uh, the the unexpected also results that we obtain with the regional action plan Plan, planned. Uh, so we have done um, three pu publication also with that uh, project, uh, two interregional dissemination event and 10 regional dissemination events, because also the part of uh, dissemination uh, of the knowledge uh, was very uh, requested by uh, the Interreg Europe program. So uh, we uh, don't want to take our results just for us, but communicate and let the results available to a larger uh, part of the um, uh, community as possible. Uh, so uh, about the holistic diagnosis that we have done in each territory uh, was divided in three strap, steps, sorry, uh, one related to the uh, context, uh, again, because we work on each single territory. The, uh, the second one was the uh, analysis of, of the present policies um, in order to understand uh, if there are some policy gaps. And the step three uh, related to the industrial uh, sectors uh, to um, understand if there are potentialities that can be improved by the new policies. So those are some examples of the giga maps that we um, uh, obtain uh, in order to uh, in, during the holistic diagnosis and you can find all those information um, in this uh, first book that uh, you can download for free in the uh, official website of the project. Uh, so the the last part, uh, the, the next part was the sharing of knowledge with that uh, uh, with those field experiences. Uh, so we select for each region uh, fifteen good practices um, by each partners. Then with the coordinator we selected. Um, eight good practices that will be the core of our field visit. And then after a, a peer review workshop with the partners, we select six good practices for uh, the best 30s that will be the uh, uh, occasion to uh, publish the second volume. Each good practices uh, is analyzed with the technical details, details, the project analysis, and the policies analysis too. Also in that case, uh, uh, the volume is uh, um, free of download uh, in, in the website. The last, the last part is related to the regional action plan where we did this metrics that cross, that cross the good practices with the policies. Uh, gap in order to define uh, the regional action plan, uh, promoting the collaboration between the different sectors, increasing the knowledge uh, of local actors uh, about the circular economy, because even if it is a buzzword, the real knowledge about that, uh, it, it is still 
uh, very uh, superficial. Uh, get along the legislation on, on circular economy, especially uh, the waste and the byproduct, how we can uh, work with them, not considering them as waste, but as a resource, promoting the policies also on monitoring the action uh, plan on circular economy and support the development of uh, enterprises uh, with their activities on circular economy. Uh, economy, especially the small and medium enterprises and also the uh, micro enterprises. Uh, so at uh, short terms, terms, we work on the poor FASRA 2014-2020, uh, but uh, uh, in the medium terms, uh, those actions uh, um, review the regional strategies uh, also for uh, the, the next uh, uh, programming. And uh, for the long term, we try to have this uh, um, action on cultural and educational aspect. So also the uh, regional action plan for the five regions are collected, collected in the third volume of the project. The next, the next project that I want to uh, share with you is the project project. It is an Horizon 2020 that will finish uh, in uh, two, three years, uh, two years. Um, and uh, it aims at the developing nature-based solution in uh, um, cities, especially uh, post-industrial cities. Um, and those nature-based solutions uh, should be co-designed with uh, uh, the different stakeholders uh, of the cities, so also with the citizens, um, and uh, recreate uh, ecosystems uh, um, in, in the different uh, uh, territory. Also in that case, uh, we uh, monitor the living lab that we generate with that project, and we implement the results in four uh, front runner cities that were uh, Torino with Mirafiori Sud uh, South, that is uh, a um, you, maybe you know Torino is the past industrial cities because uh, uh, it. it it was well, well known for a Fiat company, uh, that, so a, a car company, but nowadays it is uh, FCA and it changed and the production is not anymore in, in Turin. Um, so we have a very big uh, um, a district neighborhood that is um, a, a post-industrial neighborhood. So we work with, uh, with that um, area of the city, with Zagreb, with Dortmund in Europe. And we have also a partner in China that is Ningbo, that is also uh, a nature-based solution. Together with with those four runner cities, we have also other follower cities that are here to learn uh, from um, our experience. So in Portugal, uh, in, um, in uh, Greece and, and so on. Uh, so the, we, we again merge the different aspects uh, and we do the holistic diagnosis, taking into account the economy, uh, the mm, demography, the urban fabric and the cultural aspect. And we generate that holistic uh, diagnosis of uh, the, the district together with the citizen in that case. And here are again some example of the maps that we do uh, together with uh, not only the citizen, but also uh, the third sectors, uh, the companies, uh, many actors in the, in the territory. With that, we define some uh, criticalities, some challenges that we would like to address with, um, uh, with the project. And then uh, we define uh, the best nature-based nature solution uh, that we want to implement in the territory and where we want to implement that. 
Um, so uh, the expected results, because we are still uh, two years to running and implement these um, nature-based solutions in the territory, we are expecting uh, um, a transforming also uh, the policy making at city level, uh, a, an increase of um, uh, economy and uh, um, uh, of new companies. Um, in, uh, in, uh, in the area that can uh, use the, the vacuum, let me say, created by the, uh, the, empty, uh, the empty building that are in that area. Uh, the improve the ecological aspect of this area, even if it is one of the most green area of uh, Turin, uh, we, we would like to uh, to, uh, to to improve it with this uh, natural based solution. Um, furthermore, uh, at technical level, uh, redesign uh, um, the supply chain in order to be more local and circular. And last but not least, all the social uh, aspect uh, that is related to the co-creation and implementation of the nature-based solution that should be run also by uh, the, the citizen and have this uh, participatory uh, urban transition uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, DigiCirc is one of the last projects that I want to um, uh, explain you today. Uh, it is uh, um, connect. It, it is a, again and uh, Horizon 2020 uh, project. In that case, an Hinusup, uh, and DigiCirc uh, aims at digital. Uh, digitalization uh, of the SMEs in order to um, facilitate uh, the transition towards a circular economy. Uh, that is connected with the MOOC that I presented uh, uh, before. So we have a program of acceleration of uh, small and medium enterprises a generation of some uh, digital platform in order to make in connection different companies and doing this uh, um, MOOC, uh, massive open, um, uh, open access uh, um, course. The coordinator in that case is uh, uh, Cap Digital uh, in uh, Paris, in France, and then uh, many other uh, partners uh, spread in, uh, in your in all Europe. Uh, so with that uh, project, uh, we really want to uh, put in contact the different actors uh, in Europe, uh, specifically for uh, the, the small and medium enterprises, uh, European uh, enterprises, um, in order to uh, provide them uh, some new digital technologies to help them in that process. So we are um, implementing an industrial symbiosis pla platform uh, in order to understand the waste stream, a matchmaking platform in order to connect different companies and businesses, a geolocalization uh, tool, a geolocalization for the different material for the different waste uh, in order to help the different company to collect uh, all that kind of information and then a info portal. Those are the three uh, domains that are addressed in that project that I already I mentioned before. And uh, um, we already have seen the circular cities. We are running the uh, bioeconomy um, accelerating program uh, from October till May uh, 2020. And the blue economy starting from uh, um, uh, Feb March 2022 until uh, September uh, 2022. Uh, so I want to conclude with the uh, activities uh, related to the systemic design 
done by the Systemic Design Association uh, that, uh, as probably you know, uh, it is an association uh, registered in, uh, in Norway that uh, put together experts in systemic design from all over the world and try to um, disseminate uh, as much as possible uh, the concept related to the uh, systemic design and uh, uh, put a, a scientific community, or let me say, not only scientific, a community, because there are also a lot of practitioners in the association, um, a network all around the world that um, um, are in connection in order to uh, improve their experiences uh, all around the world and uh, try to be uh, all coordinated I cannot hear you, sorry. I just forgot to mention when I was introducing Sylvia that Sylvia is actually the chair of System Design Association. Thank you, uh, thank very, you. To, to, very grateful to have such a, such a great chair. <laughs> thank you uh, also uh, for proposing me uh, as a chair uh, in 2018 uh, when the association was funding, funded. Uh, uh, it was really unexpected uh, to be chair, uh, but uh, really I appreciated uh, your initiative and uh, I really liked that uh, experience, uh, even if I uh, manage also a maternity leave in the meantime, but it was nice. One of the main activities of um, um, Systemic Design Association is organizing every year a, a very inspiring uh, um, uh, symposium called Relating System Thinking and Design. And the next one will be in uh, um, uh, November, uh, 3 6 November, uh, in uh, Delft University uh, with uh, a hybrid uh, uh, mode, let me say. Uh, there will be part in presence, we hope. Uh, and uh, part uh, remotely. Uh, I want to conclude this uh, long, long uh, speech because I already ran my time uh, with uh, a, another uh, short video that is the I don't know what happened. Sorry, 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 one moment. I, I don't understand what the music is. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, with um, a short video uh, about uh, uh, what we have done with uh, uh, this uh, symposium, uh, the RSD7, uh, uh, when we organize it uh, here in Turin, where Marie uh, was, uh, was here. Uh, so just to have this uh, moment of... Uh, uh, memories, but just to let you understand what is the 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 environment and the air that you breathe uh, when you are coming in that kind of event. That is, uh, don't think about a um, scientific uh, um, conference. I feel it more as a family confrontation and uh, meeting each year uh, in order to, to understand what uh, was happened in the last year, what we can do in the future together and, and so on. I mute myself, I will leave you with, the, with that video. Just to mention uh, relating systems thinking and uh, design conference just has a call for papers. So anyone wants to contribute uh, perhaps about the project you are doing in our unit or you have been doing in analysis of precedents or whatever else, please let me know and I can support you with that. Yeah, of course, the deadline is the 10th, 10th of May. 15th. Uh, 15th, sorry, yes, <laughs> sorry, I, because I, I put the deadline five days before, because usually I arrive always at the end, I, it's, uh, so I, I memorize it as a 10th, so maybe for the 15th I will be ready uh, to present <laughs> something. Here.
Okay, thank you so much. I was a little bit longer. <laughs> I tried to, to run a little bit at the end, uh, but I'm here. If you have uh, any question, I'm of course available. Thank you so much, Sylvia. It was very rich and uh, very, very inspiring. Uh, I hope everybody, everybody got a lot of inspiration for our next stages within our unit. May I just ask uh, before before I let uh, let everybody ask? Uh, I I will steal the word and uh, ask myself first. Uh, I'm curious about uh, in your masters of systemic design. How much you are succeeding that the students' work get um, implemented when you collaborate with the companies? Um, uh, my course are usually um, around 65, from 60 to 70 students. And I involve um, from 10 to 15, no, too much, 10, 13, uh, companies every year and um, more and more they are the companies are engaged in uh, the the project and um, uh, I have seen in the last uh, years very high interest from the company to run that kind of um, project so uh, if they are supportive uh, for the um, for the students during the semester, there are a more possibility of success also after the the, the project. Uh, but really, in the last year, I have seen an increase of interest from the companies. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any questions? Don't be I, don't, I don't have questions, but perhaps I have uh, comments. I imagine that the companies, um, I can understand that at the beginning, they will be part of it just to see and probably better if they don't have uh, very high expectations, but probably as well a little bit reticent about what to take or not to take. And I imagine with time, it's about trust, is it, that you mention it as well, that uh, when you build uh, networks, um, even between universities or uh, between the university and the government or between the university and the communities or the offices is trust is something very important, is it? And it doesn't happen um, through paperwork and it doesn't happen. It's all the time you need to be about, um, about the contact, is it? And it's about through time, um, I imagine. And then it's great to see the, the work you are doing. And definitely I would like to know more about the, the specificities of the projects, but I don't think we have... Uh, time in here and, and in the way you are managing to work with the government uh, versus with the industry. Um, for example, the project I am doing is I am working with an organized group that they are taking the transfer of uh, land from the government. Uh, but then it's a university working with, the, um, with that group that represented the community itself. Um, however, we are not linked despite the fact of the school having links with the university. I imagine when we have a little bit more work done, then we can go to the government and then to tell them um, lesson learned and, and perhaps lesson to be used somewhere else. One of the things I like a lot is about the, um, the, the, the meal, the windmill that you use for the industry, university, government, citizens, because it's not something static. It means that it's something is moving. And even perhaps even the leadership in some cases maybe that can move around is it that it, it can be in all the different levels and then just to mention that i really like that one because it's i think it encapsulates a, a lot of it the the other comment is that i have been going to some of the uh, lectures talks event by the ICANN, which is organized by the rrba and is about the uh, climate crisis that the the architects they they have um they have joined together and saying, well, we need to start moving and we need to start acting differently. We need to start thinking about the project differently. And they have um, produced a few documents in terms of um, architecture, how we should think differently uh, with the project. And one of the things, of course, in systemic uh, thinking it comes, but I imagine when you think about circular economy, you cannot think 
without uh, systemic thinking. And I, I imagine I am a Spanish architect, therefore um, I come from the urban scale as well. Uh, and I cannot understand one scale without understanding the other, which I think that is part of a systemic thinking you know, for me is the the part that I engage more with it. But one of the things uh, they were talking about um, last week is that they mentioned, we, they had two weeks ago, they had um, a presentation from Madester. I don't know if you know them. It's a company based in the Netherlands where they are trying to implement uh, a passport for materials because they are saying that if the materials, they have a passport, Probably I don't need to elaborate. I think with the faces of uh, Maria and you, they, that you know about that, and that is a, a company that they are promoting that and having even a, um, a program uh, that architects they can use, and and of course um, is a is a is a company that they need to get the money to to implement that system, and they want architects to do it, but it's about. Uh, promoting architects to engage with that or to promote uh, clients to um, support to use that system and that it could be even something used internationally not just nationally and then there were another another person who is an implementer of a project and he was implementing projects in uh, banking project very very interesting because it's one of the sectors that you think oh they won't be that interested about sustainability and his name is uh, Petram van Hill again, uh, based in the Netherlands. And he was talking in how in one of his projects, they ask um, people using, um, working in the bank industry to donate uh, one of their jeans to become part of the, the building. And it was used on the, on the ceilings of the, of the building and how the buildings they were producing, they are going to, they are thought uh, from the viewpoint that they are going to be dismantled. And of course that comes with uh, an aesthetics within that architecture, if you like, but it was quite refreshing to see that in a sector that perhaps will think is a little bit, they will be more reticent. They were very very happy in having an architecture that is very simply built, that there isn't any glues, there isn't any chemical use uh, to making sure that all the materials, they can be um, they can be used somewhere else, used in a different way in 30, 40 years time, but also as well that none of the materials, they will have uh, chemicals uh, in there. And he was mentioning about Derek Cl uh, Clements to be an important researcher on um, the circle economy on materials and so on and so forth. Just sharing the information in case, um, I, I imagine nowadays is that, that things they are moving very quickly and they are groups forming um, very quickly as well. And the territories within which they work, sometimes it doesn't reach every everybody. Just yeah. that, but thank, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, thank you sweet, to you. Thank you, Marga. I have one more question, uh, and that is, uh, I mean, uh, we are hopefully getting a little bit out of the COVID crisis, but uh, many problems are still uh, still lasting. How do you deal with public engagement with, uh, with the situation that you cannot really go to streets and uh, meet, uh, meet people? I mean, we are trying uh, engaging with social medias and uh, so so on and uh, designing apps and things but i mean the the easiest thing is to go to the street and start talking to the people right so, so how how do you deal with uh, with this uh... yeah um, uh, fortunately the part of in those project part of um, co-design we have done it before the crisis uh, but still we are running and planning other projects what we are um, trying to do it is a smaller um, stakeholder group group meetings so with uh, less people uh, we try also to do the online event uh, but again, works if the number is not so so high. And uh, um, let me say it is not just uh, as in a co-design project. Uh, it is not just a question. Uh, it is not just have people around the table and mm, talk to them, but you should have some tools of co-design in the same way we, sh we should translate that 
real tools uh, in remote mode. Uh, so it changed a little bit. And uh, yes, you in, in any case, you, you miss a part. Uh, for example, also uh, what uh, Marga said before about the trust. Uh, it is different to um, uh, to build the trust in a remote way when you never meet a person uh, in person, and uh, it is uh, a, li a little bit more harder. And also because you have um, this sort of uh, that is not only a physical distance is. Um, a distance that allowed the person to be more uh, not attached to uh, the topic, to uh, the, the people around the table. It is, let me say, easier to um, leave the room, leave the, um, uh, the, um, the, the work, leave everything with, with that kind of approach, uh, with that remote mode. Uh, so uh, we really hope to um, to get out uh, from this uh, pandemic situation, uh, not to to come back uh, on what we have done before, but I hope that we have learned a lot from that experience uh, and appreciate also more the moment uh, of. Uh, being together, working together, because it is totally different, and also the the result can can be uh, different. Thanks, thanks so much. Uh, anybody, any any questions? Please use the opportunity. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> In any case, I have another meeting uh, in five minutes. So. Okay, okay. So then, uh, then, uh, then you have to go to bathroom and exactly. a cup of coffee or something. So, so since they didn't use the opportunity, well, your fault. And uh, thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you very thank much. Thank you to you. Firing and uh, yes, I will share with you the, the link of the recording and uh, thank you so much. Hope to see you soon in person in Torino. I hope so. Or in Netherlands. In or yeah. in Cardiff or in Netherlands for RSD 10. Yeah, in Netherlands, yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, see you. Bye. See you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.